Peace and blessings. Thank you for joining Tribe Bukurim on this daily prayer and Bible reading journey. We will read through the Bible using the one-year Bible reading plan and end in prayer. Today is June 22nd, and we will be reading from 2 Kings chapter 3 verses 1 through 27 and chapter 4 verses 1 through 17, Acts chapter 14 verses 8 through 28, Psalm chapter 140 verses 1 through 13, and Proverbs chapter 17 verse 22. Let's begin. 2 Kings chapter 3 verses 1 through 27. Jehoram overcomes Moab's revolt. Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria in the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned twelve years. He did that which was evil in the sight of Yahweh, but not like his father and like his mother, for he put away the pillar of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he held to the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, with which he made Israel to sin. He didn't depart from it. Now Mesha, king of Moab, was a sheep breeder, and he rendered to the king of Israel the wool of one hundred thousand lambs and of one hundred thousand rams. But it happened, when Ahab was dead, that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. King Jehoram went out of Samaria at that time and mustered all Israel. He went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab has rebelled against me. Will you go with me against Moab to battle? He said, I will go up. I am as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. He said, Which way shall we go up? He answered, The way of the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went, and the king of Judah, and the king of Edom, and they made a circuit of seven days' journey. There was no water for the army, nor for the animals that followed them. The king of Israel said, Alas, for Yahweh has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Isn't there here a prophet of Yahweh, that we may inquire of Yahweh by him? One of the king of Israel's servants answered, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. Jehoshaphat said, The word of Yahweh is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of your mother. The king of Israel said to him, No. For Yahweh has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Elisha said, As Yahweh of armies lives, before whom I stand, surely, were it not that I respect the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward you, nor see you. But now, bring me a minstrel. It happened, when the minstrel played, that the hand of Yahweh came on him. He said, Thus says Yahweh, Make this valley full of trenches. For thus says Yahweh, You will not see wind, neither will you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, and you will drink, both you and your livestock and your animals. This is but a light thing in the sight of Yahweh. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. You shall strike every fortified city and every choice city, and shall fail every good tree and stop all springs of water and mar every good piece of land with stones. It happened in the morning, about the time of offering the sacrifice, that, behold, water came by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. Now when all the Moabites heard that the kings had come up to fight against them, they gathered themselves together, all who were able to put on armor and upward, and stood on the border. They rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone on the water, and the Moabites saw the water over against them as red as blood. They said, This is blood! The kings are surely destroyed, and they have struck each other. Now therefore, Moab, to the spoil! When they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and struck the Moabites, so that they fled before them. And they went forward into the land, smiting the Moabites. They beat down the cities, and on every good piece of land they cast every man his stone, and filled it, 
and they stopped all the springs of water, and failed all the good trees, until in Kir Hareseth only they left its stones. However, the men, armed with slings, went about it and struck it. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was too severe for him, he took with him seven hundred men who drew sword to break through to the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him for a burnt offering on the wall. There was great wrath against Israel, and they departed from him and returned to their own land. 2 Kings chapter 4 verses 1 through 17 Elisha multiplies the widow's oil. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. You know that your servant feared Yahweh. Now the creditor has come to take for himself my two children to be slaves. Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in the house? She said, Your handmaid has nothing in the house except a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow containers from of all your neighbors, even empty containers. Don't borrow just a few. You shall go in and shut the door on you and on your sons, and pour out into all those containers, and you shall set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door on her and on her sons. They brought the containers to her, and she poured out. It happened, when the containers were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another container. He said to her, There isn't another container. The oil stopped flowing. Then she came and told the man of God. He said, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. The Shunammite Woman it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where there was a prominent woman, and she persuaded him to eat bread. So it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat bread. She said to her husband, See now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God that passes by us continually. Please let us make a little room on the wall. Let us set for him there a bed, a table, a chair, and a lampstand. It shall be when he comes to us, that he shall turn in there. One day he came there, and he turned into the room and lay there. He said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him. He said to him, Say now to her, Behold, you have cared for us with all this care. What is to be done for you? Would you like to be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. He said, What then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, Most certainly she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, Call her. When he had called her, she stood in the door. He said, At this season, when the time comes round, you will embrace a son. She said, No, my lord, you man of God, do not lie to your handmaid. The woman conceived and bore a son at that season, when the time came around, as Elisha had said to her. Acts chapter 14 verses 8 through 28 At Lystra a certain man sat, impotent in his feet, a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. He was listening to Paul speaking, who, fastening eyes on him, and seeing that he had faith to be made whole, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. He leaped up and walked. When the multitude saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voice, saying in the language of Lycaonia, The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. They called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mercury, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Jupiter, whose temple was in front of their city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, and would have made a sacrifice along with the multitudes. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of it, they tore their clothes and sprang into the multitude, crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and bring you good news, 
that you should turn from these vain things to the living God who made the sky, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who in the generations gone by allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways. Yet he didn't leave himself without witness in that he did good and gave you rains from the sky and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Even saying these things, they hardly stopped the multitudes from making a sacrifice to them. But some Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But as the disciples stood around him, he rose up and entered into the city. On the next day, he went out with Barnabas to Derbe. When they had preached the good news to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that through many afflictions we must enter into God's kingdom. When they had appointed elders for them in every assembly and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord, on whom they had believed. They passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. When they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Adaliah. From there they sailed to Antioch, from where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work which they had fulfilled. When they had arrived and had gathered the assembly together, they reported all the things that God had done with them and that he had opened a door of faith to the nations. They stayed there with the disciples for a long time. Psalm chapter 140 verses 1 through 13 For the chief musician, a psalm by David Deliver me, Yahweh, from the evil man Preserve me from the violent man Those who devise mischief in their hearts They continually gather themselves together for war They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent Viper's poison is under their lips Yahweh, keep me from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from the violent men who have determined to trip my feet. The proud have hidden a snare for me. They have spread the cords of a net by the path. They have set traps for me. I said to Yahweh, you are my God. Listen to the cry of my petitions, Yahweh. Yahweh, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. You have covered my head in the day of battle. Yahweh, don't grant the desires of the wicked. Don't let their evil plans succeed, or they will become proud. As for the head of those who surround me, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall on them. Let them be thrown into the fire, into miry pits, from where they never rise. An evil speaker won't be established in the earth. Evil will hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that Yahweh will maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the needy. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name. The upright will dwell in your presence. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 22 a cheerful heart makes good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Almighty God, we thank you for waking us this morning. We offer the sacrifice of praise to you, O God, continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to your holy name. You are great and greatly to be praised. We recognize you in your power and ask your forgiveness for anything we have said, done, or thought that was unpleasing to you. Create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits within us. Bless us with knowledge, wisdom, understanding, maturity, discernment, and focused minds. Take away any thoughts or feelings that are not in alignment with you. Open our eyes to the wonderful things of your law and make it an engrafted word in us. May we live lives according to your will denounce our sinful nature, lay our sins at your feet and walk in obedience to you for your glory. Lord, as we seek you in our prayer and study time, we desire to be more like you. Make your plans clear to us so that we may walk in the purposes and plans that you have for us. May we always hear your voice and walk in obedience to your word. 
We present our bodies as living sacrifices to you and ask that you make us aware of your presence and what you are doing in the earth today. Cover us with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Keep our physical bodies, our nation, homes, modes of transportation, places of employment, bank accounts, credit and investments and communities safe from all hurt, harm and danger. Expose and obliterate anything that dares to come against your people. Bring complete and total healing to our minds, emotions, and bodies. May your perfect will be done in the earth. We pray this prayer over ourselves and everyone connected to us in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. May the shalom peace of God follow you for the rest of your days.